Let's see how am I gonna start this? Um, <laughs> uh, gotta get in the, gotta get in my like Tom Cruise, you know, uh, space or whatever, like whatever actors do, actors do to to uh, to get pumped up for for this. Okay. Hey, my name is Jeff, and today I'm gonna give you my top ten tips for making your life in Photoshop just a little bit easier. Um, after years of teaching Photoshop, I noticed that there's certain things that uh, can, can kind of bog a student down or, you know, if you're learning how to operate this program. And I want to boil some of these down to some, some tips that'll just really help you be more productive in the program. So tip number 10, screen modes. We have these different views that we can get into. And on the, the Mac and the PC, it's a little bit different. I'm working on a PC right here. And on the PC, we're, we're always in this thing called application frame. On the Mac, under the window option down at the bottom, there is an option down there for application frame. But on PCs, that's, you're kind of always in application frame. And what that means is that the image and the name of it you see here up in my upper left, navigation TIF, uh, it's, it's tabbed up to the top. And if I wanted something more similar to the first screen mode that's in the, the Mac version, I can simply drag that tab down. And basically what, what the first screen mode is, is a floating window, where I have this floating window in the scene. On the Mac, what I would see in the background here, as you can see, is uh, my regular desktop, whatever, all the, the stuff, folders, or whatever I might have on there. Uh, on the PC, it's kind of a cleaner interface here where we have, uh, you know, just this black background here, which is pretty nice. That's the first screen mode. The screen modes themselves are at the bottom of the toolbar, you'll see this sort of double screen icon, and if I click and hold on that, you'll see standard screen mode, full screen mode with menu bar, and the regular full screen mode. So let's look through those. I'm a big fan of the hotkeys, so I can simply hit the F on the keyboard to get into the second screen mode. And essentially what this screen mode is, I like to think of it as an enormous desk that my artwork is sitting on. And if I zoom way out, you can see it's a really enormous desk. Um, and that's really handy for like if I'm doing any kind of lassoing of any kind. Um, it can be handy in the sense that then I can kind of be messy and run my lasso around outside of that artwork onto that artboard, and I'm not inadvertently popping myself out of Photoshop, which is something that can happen particularly on the Mac, where if I'm on a floating window in this screen mode, and if I pop out of that and I click on my desktop, all of a sudden now I'm in Finder on the Mac as opposed to staying in Photoshop. Not a problem here on the PC, but uh, it's something to be aware of. Um, that second screen mode is really handy for having your artwork just kind of sit on this large artboard, and you can kind of work with it and navigate around with it. That third screen mode is just the full screen. If I hit Control R, I can get rid of my rulers, and this would be handy for, say, if I'm showing the final piece to a client uh, in the office and I show them, you know, and I want to see it without any of the windows or toolbars or the option bar or anything like that available. Um, and simply just hit the F key again and I can get back to my first screen mode. Tip number nine. Okay, so a lot of these first sets of tips are about navigation. And navigating the program is sort of, the, you know, a really good step in, in feeling more comfortable with the program. One of the first things I do in Photoshop is I get my windows off to the right set up in a way that makes sense for what I'm doing. And, and most of the stuff I do in Photoshop, I'm using uh, the adjustment layers, I'm using my layers, channels, and paths, I need my properties available, history is ha handy, sometimes character and paragraph, but not as critical, and my info palette. And that's it. All the other windows I can get to in the time that I really need to get to them. Um, but really, they're just sucking up valuable real estate on my desktop. And if I'm working on a laptop, I don't have a whole lot of space. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this color tab here and drag it out. And you'll see I can then just hit the little X and exit out. Swatches, don't need that. I can get to that later. That's more design type work. Um, and this is along the lines of something that, you know, would be more what I would work with. You know, I can move my tabs around depending upon what I'd like on the left or the right. Um, typically, I'll work layers, channels, paths uh, in this area down below, and adjustments and properties up above. Now, I don't want to have to keep coming back and, and choosing uh, a particular, you know, I don't want to have to go to a default in Photoshop. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to choose down here under this little tab, new workspace, and I can call it whatever I want. I can call it Jeff's workspace if I want. 
and I use a lot of keyboard shortcuts. I want my menus to show up in the same place. And if I do any customization to my toolbar on the left, I'd want to save that as well. And I can save it. And that way, if I'm working and let's say, you know, I need to send a client a screenshot of, uh, you know, what my layers are looking like there. Maybe I'm passing my retouching on to somebody else. And all of a sudden, my desktop begins to look like this. It's starting to get messy. I can come back to this window in the upper right and I can choose Reset Jeff's Workspace. And it's great because it just snaps everything back to my preference. If you want to learn more about workspaces, check out this video. Photoshop tip number eight. So in regards to navigation, there are many times that I need to zoom in closer on my image or zoom out. And I could come up and hit the view menu and come down to zoom in and click once. And you can see an incremental little zoom in. I could click it again, zoom in again. This could take me a little while. That's pretty annoying to me. The more I can avoid using the mouse or the trackpad, uh, the more proficient I can be in Photoshop because there's so many keyboard shortcuts that are available to us that can speed things up. So I can simply come to the control key and hit the plus, and on the Mac that's command plus or the equals sign. Control or command plus will zoom me in as I toggle that plus key, and conversely, control or command minus or the hyphen key next to it will zoom me out which is great. And that's a lot faster than bringing my mouse all the way over to the view menu and then toggling each time and clicking on it. It's ridiculous. Now there's times that I'm zoomed way in on an image and I don't want to have to control minus click, you know, 15 times or so in order to zoom all the way back out again. I just want to fit it to screen in one move. So control or command zero will snap me back to fit the image on screen. It's really handy. And there's times that I need to come right up to 100% immediately. I don't want to have to control plus and zoom my way all the way in. I can hit control alt on the Mac. It's command option, control alt zero, and it snaps me immediately right up to 100%. Photoshop tip number seven. Okay, so now that I'm zoomed in 100%, I need to be able to navigate around. Um, I can certainly, again, with my mouse, come over here to the toolbar and click on the hand tool. However, often I might be working with another tool and I don't necessarily want to use my mouse to go and get the hand tool. I can simply just hold the space bar and the space bar will shortcut me no matter what other tool I'm on right into the hand tool which allows me to then click and drag with my mouse or my trackpad or whatever I'm using, sometimes a Wacom tablet, and I can navigate at 100% around my image. And it's really super handy to be able to do this as a shortcut as opposed to having to go over to the toolbar and grab the hand and, and all of that. Okay, Photoshop tip number six. So now let's talk, we talked a little bit about navigation. Let's talk about selections. Uh, one of my favorite tricks in Photoshop has to do with the, the lasso tools, I'm making a selection of a particular item. And I'm gonna control plus my way in and use the space bar to navigate over to this little zone. And I'm gonna get over here to my magnetic lasso which is looking at the contrast of the edge of the object against the background here and, and generally kind of doing the job for me. Now, as I select around this round bit here, all of a sudden I come down to an area of straightaway. You'll notice this as I come around here, now I have a straight edge that I can come to. This is my, one of my favorite little shortcuts. In, in this spot right here, I'm gonna hold the Alt key, Option on the Mac, and I'm gonna click once, and you'll see as I hold that Option key right here, or Alt key, it temporarily jumps into the polygonal lasso tool, which allows me to just make a straight selection right down here to this next round bit, and I let go of the Alt or Option key at this point, click once, and then I'm back into the magnetic lasso tool. It's one of my favorite little tricks in with the lasso tools to allow you to make a selection around something that has both rounded edges as well as straight zones. Okay, Photoshop tip number five. Now we're talking about selections and we've got a, a you know, general selection around this object. Magnetic lasso is a little bit of a squirrely character and sometimes likes to get jumpy. And often if the jumps are you know, happening to me, I'll just kind of complete that overall selection that I'm making. And I won't worry too much about uh, you know, having to start over or anything like that. At this point, most of this is selected and I just need to clean it up at this point. You can see down below here I have this bit of the pot that is not selected. And then I have some area of white here on the top and on the side that is selected, but we don't want it selected. Now, again, I can certainly come up here with my mouse to the upper left and choose the add to selection boxes here. But 
it's a lot faster for me to just hold the shift key, and you'll see that now my magnetic lasso has a little plus sign next to it. And as I click and I hold that shift key, I can just encircle this little bit, telling Photoshop, add this little section that I'm encircling to the selection. And at the same time, I can come over here and I can subtract these areas of selection out of the white area by holding the Alt. On the Mac, that would be the Option key. On the PC here, the Alt key. And I can come here and I can run this along the edge and encircle that little bit, and it subtracts these little bits of white that I don't want selected from that selection, tightening up that overall selection. Additionally, the Shift and Option, or Shift and Alt on the PC, um, Add or Subtract To, that works on all of these tools. So I can be on the Freehand Lasso, you'll see there's Add and Subtract To boxes there. I can be on the Polygono, I can be on the Magnetic Lasso, it works on the Marquees, um, it works here on the Magic Wand tool, works on the Quick Select tool, so it works on all these, these various selection tools that we're working with. Okay, so Photoshop tip number four. This is something that is super common. The years that I've been teaching, um, I notice this over and over again, and it's just a good one to remember. Sometimes it happens to me. Maybe you've been doing some work with the Magic Wand tool or another selection tool, and you know, often with these trackpads and uh, you know other tools, different you know types of mouses, and then uh, you know the different tablets you can get. Sometimes we might inadvertently have a little selection somewhere that we didn't know about. Let's say we're working on this image and we want to do something. We want to do some clone stamping, right? So we come in and we you know select a little zone that we want to clone stamp, and we click and we notice nothing happens. And students will say, well, nothing's happening. I don't understand. My first stop always is the Select menu. I'll click the Select menu, and if Deselect is an option that's available to me, that means I have a selection somewhere in my image that I didn't notice. And you'll see here that if I zoom in on this little bit right there, and see that little bit of marching ants happening right there, so that's the only area that's going to be affected. And with Photoshop, that's kind of the whole mantra is select to effect. We're looking to select something to have an effect on it. And so anything that I try to do in Photoshop, it's going to want to do it to that little area of marching ants. So if select is an option that's available to you, if you're finding yourself like, why is something not happening for me? Make your first stop the select menu. If deselect is there, click deselect and then move on. Okay, Photoshop tip number three. Now this is a preference, um, however, I will tell you the reason why I do this. You'll notice in the upper left with some of these selection tools that there's an option for feathering. And feathering adds a little bit of a soft edge to that selection so that when you make some sort of an adjustment, it doesn't have a hard sort of cutout, paper, paper doll cutout sort of look to it. Um, it l gives a little bit more blending. I keep that feather all the time on zero pixels. I would say probably the only time I ever put any sort of feathering in there is when I'm using frequency separation techniques with retouching. Every other time I put that feathering on zero. And the reason is, is because if I'm making a selection, let's say, I'm gonna for right now just put, let's say 30 pixels in there. Maybe that was there from some other time I was, I was doing some work and that's what I needed. And I'm making some sort of selection around an object, right? and I finish that selection, and all of a sudden I discover that it's a 30 pixel feather. Okay, so I've made the selection, and if I zoom in that 30 pixel feather, notice how that selection is not hugging the edge of my object, and that's because of that feathering. It's accounting for the fact that it's this sort of loosey-goosey thing. But one of the main reasons why this is of concern to me is if you look over here at my history window, it only shows one history state, and that's magnetic lasso, the whole selection. Essentially, I've baked that 30 pixel feather into that selection, and it doesn't show up as a separate history item that I could undo. Now, if I have a selection that doesn't have that feathering, I say zero in that feathering, and I'm just gonna select this bit right here at the top, now you'll see that I have in my history window a history state for magnetic lasso. Great. It gives me the opportunity now to come to the select menu and come down to modify and choose my feathering after. And if I want to feather at a certain amount, let's say two pixels, I can then plug that in. And notice now in my history window that it has a feathering associated as a history state, which gives me 
something I can actually undo if I decide that that two pixels is too much or not enough. My recommendation is to always keep the feathering on the tool at zero. There's really only certain times that you'd need to ever have anything in that feathering window. Keep it as a separate history state, which will give you the opportunity to undo it and, and fix it if it's not right. Photoshop tip number two. While we're on the topic of undoing things, I have the selection going. You can see that I have some options, you know, some things going on in my history. Uh, I opened the image, I made a selection, I deselected, a couple more selections, and then I feathered the selection. Now, if I want to undo, I can certainly come over here to edit, undo, delete states, whatever it may be that is going on. I can hit the Control Z key and it gives me only one step forward and one step back in time. And you can see that up here at under edit, undo delete states, edit redo delete states. That's control Z, command Z on the Mac. Now, if I want to go back in time one step at a time, I would hold the control alt or option or command option on the Mac, control alt on the PC, and then toggle the Z. So I basically am holding control alt or command option on the Mac and toggling the Z key. And notice in my history window, as I toggle the Z, it moves me one history state back in time. Now, the other modifier key that will allow me to move forward in time is the shift key. I can hold the shift key with the control key or the command key on the Mac and toggle the Z, and it moves me one step at a time forward in my history. And I would say of all the keyboard shortcuts to know, the control or command Z, and then the modifier keys, Alt, Option, or Shift added to that Z are among the most important ones that you'd need to know because constantly we're making little mini mistakes in Photoshop as we work and we need to be able to just quickly undo that and retry that technique. Get those ones down, Command Z, Control Z, Shift and Option or Alt will allow you to move forward or move backward in time. And you can see those shortcuts here under the Edit menu, just to the right, it tells you those same shortcuts that you would use. Okay, Photoshop tip number one. You can certainly use the mouse or the trackpad or a tablet to navigate over to every tool that is available to you on the left. However, all of the tools on the toolbar have a hotkey that's associated with them. And one way that you can quickly get into becoming a faster Photoshop editor is to learn those hotkeys. It can be a little painstaking at first because you, you know, have to be cognizant of it, say, well, okay, I'm going to go to the magnetic lasso now, and then you can look on your list, oh, that's L, and then you type the L key, and there I am. What's nice is that along these, the side of these little tools here, you'll see there's a little down arrow caret, and if I click and hold, that's indicating that there's other nested tools in there. Now, they all have the hotkey L. What are we going to do about that? Now, if we add the shift key, and toggle the L. Now we can toggle through those keys. And after using the program enough, you'll remember how you have it set up. In my case, I have my freehand lasso, my polygonal lasso, and my magnetic lasso nested together. So there's just those three. So as I go from freehand lasso to polygono, it's just shift L once. And then I want to go from there to the magnetic, shift L again. If I'm on, let's say I'm on the magnetic lasso and I need to get to the polygono, well, we learned in another tip that we can bounce into it on the fly. But if I know that I for sure need to get over to that tool, I know it's two steps away. So I can just hit Shift, L, L, and I'm on the polygono lasso. All of these tools have an associated hotkey. As you hover over them uh, and you click, you can see that it tells you to the right what that hotkey is. I recommend learning them because after a little while, you'll just know, well, marquee is M, move tool is V, a uh, patch tool and some of the healing brushes are J, clone stamp is S, hand tool is H, pen tool is P, and as you begin to learn those, instead of wasting time navigating over there with your mouse, you can simply just hit one keystroke and you're on that tool. It's one of my favorite tips, and I recommend you learn the hotkeys. Um, it's sort of the you know, your, your segue into learning more of the keyboard shortcuts in Photoshop that'll just really start to expand your productivity and really increase it. So. If you like this video, hit the like sign. If you didn't like it, hit the dislike sign. Feel free to leave a comment in the comments below and we'll get back to you. Uh, if you'd like to subscribe for more content, you can do so in the upper right down there. Thanks for watching.